let's talk about everything I've watched recently. So I haven't done one of these since October and I'm a little rusty and I got some catching up to do. So let's dive right into it. First movie I want to talk about is It Lives Inside. This is a 2023 horror about an Indian American girl who is struggling with her identity and one of her friends experiences something horrific and she disappears. And this girl decides to investigate and look into what happened to her friend and she discovers that it might be connected to this demon. The whole story is mostly about her finding herself and really embracing her culture and her identity rather than hiding from it. I thought it was a really interesting story. I liked the cultural aspect of it. I did want a little bit more of that and I found some of the scares to be a little generic and cheesy at times but I really liked the lead performance and her relationship with her mother in this. Those were the the elements of the movie that really stood out to me. I think it's a really interesting first film from this director. I believe it's this director's debut. And I thought it was a decent entry. It's almost like a Nightmare on Elm Street style horror movie where these kids are experiencing stuff when they sleep and some of the stuff really is unsettling. The imagery is really creepy and I think it's a decent watch. Another movie I watched is Birth Rebirth. This is another 2023 horror movie and this one really surprised me. This is about a woman whose daughter dies of like meningitis and when she's looking for her body in the hospital she can't find it. They can't find it and it turns out the morgue attendant has taken her body and she's done some experiments on it and she discovers that this woman has essentially brought her daughter back to life and these two women come together and develop a relationship as they try to keep this woman's daughter alive and there's a lot of moral situations moral dilemma going on where this mother is trying to obviously keep her daughter alive she'll go at great lengths to keep her daughter alive even if that means putting others in harmful situations and it's just really interesting it's sad and bleak at times and it's just a unique story it's kind of like a frankenstein style story the relationship between the two women is really interesting i love the two actresses in it and i think had i watched this movie last year it would have been on my favorites of the year list it's on shutter highly recommend it then i re-watched a shit ton of stephen king miniseries and i'm gonna do a whole ranking video on these because I just I love them. I love the Stephen King miniseries. There's something special and unique about them. There's a special charm and some of them are obviously better than others. I'm literally watching all of them and that's taking up most of my viewing time where that's all I've been watching and I'm sad that it's almost coming to an end. I've watched some that I really enjoyed that I didn't think I would like so I'm excited to do a full video breakdown on my thoughts because ugh, I just I miss the Stephen King miniseries era. Then I checked out Video Violence from 1987. This was a really unique horror movie. It's very dark and disturbing and it's very low budget. It's about these two guys that are working in a video store and somebody returns a video and when they watch it they discover that it's a snuff film like somebody's being murdered in this and when they bring it to the police the police don't really believe them and then the tape goes missing then the guy in the video store goes on like an investigative journey trying to figure out where this videotape came from and who's behind it and it's just really interesting and it's cool to see what they were able to accomplish with so little on such a small budget there's such a charm to it and you can see the passion come through the screen and the stuff they actually show the videos and it's really it's hard to watch because it feels so real and because of how old it is it's like 36 years old it just there's this extra creep factor to it to me this is on Tubi I think they came out with more than one and I was just really impressed by it and it makes me miss video stores so much then I watched a movie called Knuckleball from 2018 this is about a boy who is staying with his grandfather while his parents go on a trip and it's in the middle of the winter and they're kind of like in this isolated farm setting and one day he wakes up his grandfather's dead and he has no way of contacting authorities or his parents because his phone dies and they don't have a phone in the house and he becomes a target of this crazy person who lives nearby and it was just really unique and entertaining it kind of becomes like a home alone situation where this kid is fighting off this bad guy and it's just fun and cool to see him do that then i checked out the artifice girl from 2022 this movie was really interesting so it's about this guy who creates this ai girl to help him capture 
child predators online and the FBI takes him in because they want to use this technology to catch bad guys and it shows how the program develops over time and they really start to use this girl and it takes into question moral aspects of this and if the AI should be asked permission if they want to be doing this because the AI girl is so smart she's almost like a real girl but she's being forced into these horrible situations but it's for the better of humanity. So it's just really interesting that I watched Freeway for the first time. This was on Joe Bob's Violent Valentine's Day special on Shudder. It was really good. It's basically like a very dark and disturbing Little Red Riding Hood story where it centers on Reese Witherspoon's character who is just kind of from a rundown home. Like her mom is a sex worker and drug addict and her stepfather has been abusing her and they get arrested and Reese Witherspoon doesn't want to go into like a home or anything so she runs away because she wants to go to her grandmother's house for safekeeping and then she runs into Kiefer Sutherland's character who happens to be a really bad guy. He is I believe a serial killer so it's really creepy when they meet. It starts off good and then you can slowly see him start to be super creepy and inappropriate with her but Reese Witherspoon's character is so good like she's so interesting and she's such a fighter like such a little badass and she fights back and she gets put into an even crazier situation from there and it's just following her insane journey but I just love that she doesn't back down and she she can handle herself in any situation she's put in so it was just really good it was really interesting I don't know if I'd watch it again though it just made me feel weird but Reese Witherspoon everyone in the movie is really good and then I watched Vamp for the first time this is from 1986 this is about a group of college kids who go to a strip club and it turns out that there's vampires that, that are running this strip club and one of the friends gets a special private dance with their lead lady who is played by Grace Jones and she's like the queen vampire and she she attacks him and all hell ensues after that where his friend is trying to find him through that the rest of the movie. The story takes place on the streets of LA in the middle of the night. This kid is like being chased by a gang of albinos and he's going in sewers and it's just like a weird journey but it's so beautiful and fun because it's super colorful. It's wacky and weird and campy and I loved it. And Grace Jones, she comes out and does this really like sexy dance. It's almost reminiscent of Salma Hayek in From Dust Till Dawn. And while I was watching this movie, I was like, whoa, this movie is like From Dust Till Dawn. It's like the same situation. It was just fun. I think Joe Bob was a little hard on it. And it does go all over the place and seem to go on a little bit too long. But it was fun. I think the characters are fun. I love the environment and the setting. And I think it's silly and entertaining. Then I watched Lisa Frankenstein, which I did. Did a whole review on. I absolutely loved it. I love the 80s vibe and aesthetic. I love Catherine Newton and Cole Sprouse as the couple. They have great chemistry. It's really cute. It's silly. It's over the top. It's campy and I think it's going to become a favorite over time. Then I watched a few other movies that are similar in vibe of zombie romances. I watched Boy Eats Girl from 2005. This is about a boy who accidentally unalives himself and his mother brings him back to life. And while he is trying to live he can't fight this urge for human flesh and he starts infecting other people in the town and a zombie outbreak happens. This is all happening while he's dealing with the situation with this girl he loves and it's just really cute to watch that story unfold and it's also fun with the whole zombie element. It's a very early 2000s and Samantha Mumba stars in it so she's great. She's, she kicks zombie ass and I love it. I also watched Life After Beth which is a really weird one. It's like quirky and awkward humor. Aubrey Plaza plays this girl who dies and is she's brought back to life mysteriously and it centers on the people around her including her boyfriend who is trying to deal with this and unfortunately when she's brought back to life she comes back with anger issues and a, a hunger for human flesh and it kind of just goes crazy from there. It's just, yeah, it's really awkward and uncomfortable humor and 
it's Aubrey Plaza doing what she does best. It's like that deadpan, almost like emotionless humor. She's great in this. I think everybody in this movie is great. It's just a weird movie. I watched The Transfiguration from 2016. This is about a young boy named Milo who is very lonely and he's also got a fascination with vampires and he starts to bite people and drink their blood and he ends up meeting this other teenage girl who lives in his apartment building and they kind of strike up this weird relationship together. This one just made me sad because it's not the kind of vampire story I was expecting. I think that it's sad to see this young boy's life. He's just so lonely and isolated and he's obviously mentally unwell and there's no one around to really help him through that and he has a brother who is also dealing with some sort of depression because their mother died and they live in this projects where a gang that also bullies this character and it's just sad to see all of this stuff happen and there's just like no hope for him and just to watch his journey it's very upsetting it's sad it's a sad bleak story but it was really interesting then i watched megalomaniac from 2012 so this is a french language horror about this guy known as the butcher he was a serial killer who murdered tons of women and then he suddenly goes inactive for decades then the movie focuses on his two kids who are now adults and they're kind of taken over in his footsteps the son is full-on a serial killer kills people and the daughter is this weird antisocial girl who's got a lot of issues and she's abused at work and she also has this urge to I don't know if it's more she's lonely so she wants her brother to bring her somebody that she can play with and have a pet as if you will and bring this person into their family and it's just a really dark and disturbing film featured with lots of violence against women and I'm not really sure what the point of it all is other than to show these poor women being brutalized and I think it's just highlighting the horrific abuse that women face and have to deal with and how some people just let it happen and don't really say anything or do anything to help the situation and make things stop. It was just really sad and upsetting and I watched it late at night and it gave me weird dreams. There are some weird creepy situations and like imagery in this that is kind of scary but overall it was really boring like I, I thought this was like an extreme horror where yeah we do get those extreme moments of violence but the story just is kind of slow and it stays stagnant throughout until the very end and I don't really know what the movie was trying to say but I do know that I didn't like it but I think some people might like it. I saw that a lot of people liked it on Letterboxd so you might like it too. It's on Shutter, but look up trigger warnings because it is brutal. And then I ended off things with The Abyss from 1989. This is currently streaming on Hulu and I thought that this movie wasn't streaming anywhere so I was excited to find it. This is from James Cameron and it's about a crew of this ship that is sent down to find this other ship that went missing or crashed, figure out what happened, and they encounter an alien species underwater, and a whole other bunch of shit that happens that goes wrong. It's like an epic underwater adventure, and it almost feels like alien in the sense of this crew, you really get to know them and like them. One is like walking around with the, his pet rat and the two like lead people are uh, married but they're going through a separation so there's a lot of banter and bickering back and forth between them but you can tell there's a lot of love between them and there's just a lot of fun characters side characters and then we have the antagonist characters who are from the government I believe that are making them go on this journey and it's just crazy and insane there's some really action-packed moments in this movie and some moments that made me feel like I was suffocating and I was actually drowning because anything underwater just is on another level scary to me and just to see situations where characters are almost drowning they're on the bottom of the ocean and going through this really scary stuff I was on the edge of my seat and what's even crazier is watching this I know that this movie is notorious for the filming the production of it and how horrible it was for everyone involved because I believe they did everything underwater and it was just a horrible filming situation all around so I think that made it even more 
terrifying to watch to know that these characters were in unsafe conditions while they were filming this movie but it's insane what he was able to pull off with all of this underwater stuff it's just insane and this movie was filmed in 1989 and it doesn't feel like it like it feels like a modern action adventure thriller and I really enjoyed it I thought it was really good I am terrified of aquatic horror I need to watch more aquatic horror now that's everything I've been watching lately let me know if you've watched any of the movies I talked about what movie stands out to you most and if you have any recommendations for me because I'm in need of some movie recommendations and thanks so much for watching guys I will catch you next time Bye.